get going. Um, hi, I'm uh, Carlos Cardona. I'm the president of the Garden Photographic Society. We try and do these uh, programs once a month. Um, and uh, I'll just um, point out a couple of uh, things we have upcoming um, in terms of our news. Our, uh, we just finished our Nature in View uh, gallery show at the Chicago Botanic Garden. Uh, you can see my uh, video walkthrough of the Nature in View um, on our garden YouTube channel. Uh, you can see the link to, you can just, if you go to YouTube and, and search for uh, Garden Photographic Society, it'll come up. Uh, but you can also get the link on our homepage, which is gardenphoto.org. Um, coming up for our members who are here, um, the February DPI competition number four, the upload deadline is Monday, February 7th at noon. And then the uh, <clears throat> results meeting will be February 17th at 7 p.m. Both those links are on our, um, on our site. And also uh, just a little bit of <clears throat> other cl club news. We've uh, reduced the number of categories. We've taken off the creative abstract category because there wasn't enough participation in it. And in February, actually that's abstracts created in the camera is the special subject anyway. So um, we, we, we cut that category out totally for the moment and see if it comes back at some point. So just the four uh, typical categories, monochrome, color, non-nature, pictorial nature, and special subject. Okay, so uh, without any further ado, we have 41 participants. Uh, I would like to introduce Sherry Sparks. Um, she is going to give us a, um, a program uh, called Seize the Moment. Uh, we're going to examine three different vignettes, Illinois Beach State Park, the Foxes of Winthrop Harbor Marina, and Song of the Trees. Okay, so um, Sherry, thank you so much for being here. Hey, and hello. Oh, back up. Okay. Everybody can see the screen now? Yep. Yep. All right. Um, so seize the moment. Um, we've, been, we've been just going through a real pandemic and um, a number of people said they just aren't photographing that much anymore. And it, in some ways, it's a little bit of a shame. I know with me um, and a lot of people, you just have to rethink on uh, photographing. Um, it's when it's we first closed down. I was just getting ready to go to Chicago Botanic Garden. I couldn't go there. Um, the forest preserves were all closed down. Couldn't go there. And so uh, Kimberly Shattuck from Lake County had done some um, taking pictures of flowers on her light box. And I says I really like what she's done with that. And so I went in our yard and in in um, back in the woods behind her house and. Uh, cut some flowers and practice doing uh, just that, putting them on the light box. Uh, the first um, side here is just a snowdrop, um, just plain as a light box and I put a little frame around it. The other one, the daffodils, I then got a little creative and put um, just um, a, a little distortion and stuff on, on it to just um, add a little more interest to it. What you are seeing here, <laughs> I just took this two days ago and I says, oh, I'm just gonna put this in here because these are the Mag 7. Uh, they have become a little bit of an icon in Winsop Harbor. It's a family of seven turkeys that um, we first started seeing at the beginning of the year. And um, they were at that time they were coming even into our backyard mm. and I see them when they're kind of small and but you wouldn't you wouldn't know where they and when they'd show up and then some people in, in this neighborhood here were um posting how the turkeys every night would come up their driveway and they'd roost in the trees well i never knew turkeys roosted into trees during the night time and so i had to go see it and i, I generally didn't follow them too closely because they're always around by houses. And to get a, a good picture of them, I got a few 
nice pictures, but they're just kind of wild turkeys. And I was able to watch them as they flew up into the trees and they'd hop up on the garage and flew in there. So it was just kind of interesting. And so it's stuff like this that I'm just doing things a little different with photography and just having some fun with it. And so what I mean by seizing the moment is just to take advantage of things and circumstances around you. Um, I haven't been traveled, traveling to faraway countries now, been staying closer to home. So just, you know, go to a local forest preserve and study it. Take a better look at your own neighborhood. You'll never know what you'll find in your neighborhood. Um, and animals that lurk around even at, at, in the nighttime. Um, take advantage of special events that may occur. Take a photo class online. And one thing when the pandemic first started, is um, out of Chicago, jumped on the bandwagon right away. And they um, had an online thing in the springtime instead of usually when they meet in the Chicago for um, their um, series. And so I says, oh, hey, great. I don't have to travel into Chicago. And I took it and I learned a lot of things to, that you could do in your own house at the time and not have to uh, worry about traveling out. And so experiment with different uh, photo techniques, new to you and stuff you can do in your own home. And you can do all this and still be safe during this unsure time. And so what I'll be sharing tonight are three venues to share three different ideas. Uh, one is going to a certain place many times over and over to study and learn about it. And this is Illinois Beach State Park. And Illinois Beach Tech State Park is very diverse. And so um, I'll show you some of the things. Uh, take advantage of a short time opportunity. And this was the story of the foxes with the Harbor that were just there for uh, a season. And then study a photo interest you have in depth. And I was showing Song of the Trees. Okay, so we'll start out with Illinois Beach State Park. And like I said, it's a place of biodiversity. And you can see my husband up here on the road, on his bike. And uh, we travel, we were to be out for exercise. We go on our uh, bikes every day. I have a, a basket I could put my camera in and take pictures, whatever we came across. So I was going there very frequently. And here, They've now put a sign up that says, Welcome to Illinois uh, Beach Nature Preserve. And they claim to be the nation's first nature preserve in 1964. And it's, it's, um, this is the, the broad that this is Lake Michigan over here. And so this is the uh, main street in Winthrop Harbor. Um, the Winthrop Harbor uh, Marina's here, and where the foxes were, were right along in here uh, in the marina. And then this is, um, they call it the main entrance, or it goes by Sand Pond on 17th Street. And then what more people know is on Wadsworth Road, a little farther to the south. And this is where the uh, nature preserve is right down here in the Dead River um, Trail. And some of the different kinds of areas they have there are woods, prairie area, rivers and small ponds, and then of course, Lake Michigan, Lake and the beaches. And I've gone to visit there through the seasons, uh, spring, summer, fall, and winter. And if you go to anywhere, a forest preserve um, near you, a park near you, I, um, encourage you to uh, explore it fully and uh, journey down a different path. Illinois Beach Star State Park does have different trails and paths to go on. Here again is Wayne and our dog Sebastian when he was a little younger and he'd go ride, ride beside our bikes uh, down there. Um, and you can see a lot of things. Here's a road, this road now, you can, it's, it looks like it's all breaking up and it is, but it's really not there anymore. Um, but there used to be a subdivision that lived down here and they uh, was down there and they moved all the houses out um, when they made it part of the 
Illinois Beach State Park. Um, down near the Dead River, you can see these um, cement posts in here and they're I found it one year when the area, this whole area in here was rather flooded in the springtime. Um, the Dead River had come up quite a bit. We had quite a bit of rain. And this is the only way you could get um, through is by uh, going on the, these steps here. And then also down in this one, this is a trail that was along the lake. And to show just how changes occur, the lake here was out like about a block or two. It was all sand, but now it has eroded and it has, you can see here where it even took out part of the uh, roadway that they had in there. And here's just a few um, scenics along uh, the lake and along the Dead River. And people always like to ask about, well, what equipment you use? So I've included that in these different um, sections. Um, for scenic equipment, uh, and since I was traveling on my bike a lot, um, I use an 18 to 400 millimeter MLS stabilizing uh, lens. And some pictures I do on a tripod, some I did not. Um, if I was using a tripod, I'd use my remote control or two second timer. Um, setting the camera to give it a little more stabilization. Um, so sometimes I use HDR, and so I was using different exposures. And for scenics, I use the lowest ISO and the highest f-stop um, that I, I can so I can get the best depth of field. And I'm usually using aperture priority mode. And for the scenics, here's this is Sand Pond. And it's just to show you it's the same place, but a different time of day and a different view. And it, you get um, differences. Okay, so here we are now, it's winter time. People don't like to go out to winter uh, to photograph, but um, you can find interesting stuff um, out there. Um, by the lake, um, sometimes when the lake isn't quite frozen, but it, there are it does have a depth of uh, freezing. If the waves come underneath, it can crack um, that ice. And, and with strong uh, waves, it brings that ice in. And you get all this um, ice here. After a snow, it, it causes what I call snow donuts uh, by how it uh, was in there and the waves com coming in there. You see different shapes with the snow patterns, snow drifting because um, along the lake, it can be kind of windy and drift the snow in and just different ice formations you can find along the lake. And if there isn't a lot of snow, I've um, gone out there and seen just these different sand patterns where just a light bit of snow and just the movement that is made, how, how interesting that can be. Talk about abstracts done in the camera. And just some lakeside scenics. Um, high, like I said, high winds that may occur. And if the a lake isn't frozen yet and it splashes up on the shore and splashes on the vegetation, it can give some interesting ice formations. Just some other scenes along. And then uh, this is on uh, near the nature center. Uh, a bridge they have that goes to the uh, lake and there's a generally there's on either side here there's a little bit of a pond depending on how much water there is and so just watch the weather whether it's sunny a fog uh, call for snow um, different things um, it can give add interest to your scenics or look for man-made events as a, a controlled burn. Here's a trail um, through Illinois Beach and you can see a lot of dead grass here. But then when they do a controlled burn, it'll look like this for a while. At, but when it grows back in, it's nice and green. So when you get flowers and um, stuff growing in here, you won't have this dead vegetation. It'll be 
uh, much better. So when you know they've done a control burn at a forest preserve near you, go out next spring and take some, because you know you should get some good flower pictures with a good background. And so here we are at flowers. I've found lots of flowers at Illinois Beach State Park. Um, and decide whether you want, you can do a scenic, you can do close-ups. And there certainly is a variety. And colorful. And there's something new each season uh, from early spring to the fall. And here's just uh, some of the wildflowers in that that I have taken um, at Illinois Beach State Park. And so for flower photo equipment, I usually uh, use my 100 millimeter macro lens. And then I also have uh, close up filters here that I can put on the uh, macro lens too to get even closer. Um, I generally be using a tripod with a remote control. Um, use, I use reflectors and uh, diffusers. You can't see too, it, the diffuser there too good. Um, to control the light, I'm using a low ISO um, so I can get the highest F stop to get the best depth of field and using aperture priority. And so you can you can go out and take a whole field of flowers. This Indian paintbrush was right uh, by the road near the nature center or get in a little closer with uh, this branch, tree branch there. Just a small little clump, or you can do a close up. And just look for different ways to photograph your subject. Um, these black eyed Susans that I saw them right out in the field, there was a foggy day and I says, hey, I wonder how that would look for a background. So I got down real low and the fog here became my background to isolate the flowers out. And then um, the close up of the Indian paintbrush. And then sometimes it's nice to get an insect um, on your flower to add a little um, interest. And just learn about your subjects that are there. Um, from the pussy willows that have uh, are gray and then the flowers come out um, later. Um, and so they have those nice little yellow um, flowers on it. Um, know about the prickly pear cactus that they're low to the ground. Um, they don't usually like to open up until the sun comes out. So they're, you know, it's best to photo them around, photograph them around nine o'clock in the morning. And some flowers um, will bloom from the bottom to the top, like these here, and others bloom from the top to the bottom. So it's always best to catch them um, when they're at their peak instead of having, um, you know, dead stuff like on the lupin down here but to have that, that open down here and not quite open up on top. And so with the blazing stars to catch them when they're good here, instead of blooming down here and they're dead brown at the top. Just a second. Wayne, you better take care of them. Will you take care of them? No, you take care of them. Oh, that's what I was doing. Come on, let's go outside. Okay. And then the milkweed pods, um, down here, you know, they're they're closed up, they're green, and then when they turn brown, then you know that they're going to open up and um, the seeds are going to um, uh, come out. So that makes for an interesting uh, photo. There's different kinds, different colors, and different blooming times. Uh, the two um, blazing stars, Rupp and Prairie, they um, bloom a little slightly at different times. The uh, prairie clover coming in uh, pink or white and the gentians have the uh, fringe or bottle gentians. And I just encourage you to uh, keep a diary um, 
I got a naturalist diary that's kind of split up in, a, in different days. And so I can write in there when I see the different flowers, when I go to different places and see um, maybe like with the foxes, when I first saw the kits come out of the den. So I can look back and say, oh, start looking for this now. And you know, you can trace it each year then. Um, so when you're outside, it's like setting up a um, outside studio. You need to take a little control. Um, here is the prickly pear cactus, nine o'clock in the morning. Well, bright sun looks kind of blown out. So if you have an overcast day, you're going to need some fill flash or reflectors. And on a bright day, you'll need to diffuse it and reflect light back in. And so here is um, uh, Pat and Jim. And you can see they're using the diffusers to um, shade the area a bit um, and yet need the reflector to reflect light in. Here's why tried using the diffuser and I missed the background. You have to keep watch of the flower itself and the background too. Um, so you get it even toned. And then here's when I did it right. So it's, um, I did the diffuser and uh, reflected the light back in and it's got the nice even lighting throughout. And then um, insect photography, it's great for, in the Illinois beach, it's great for insect uh, photos too. I use a hundred millimeter macro lens um, with image stabilizing. And now I've started using my hundred to 400 millimeter lens uh, because the new Mark II that I have, Canon Mark II focuses closer. And, and so I, I can get them. I'm usually doing it handheld so I'm using a higher ISO so it can get a higher shutter speed. And sometimes I'll use the on-camera flash for a little fill light. And here are some of the butterflies that I have um, gotten at Illinois Beach and other insects. Um, because of the dead river there, um, it has, it's great for doing dragonflies um, down there and I've seen a lot. In um, by Sand Pond, I've, there's flowers usually around in the area, and I've seen a lot of insects in that because it's a prairie area. I've seen a lot of insects on the flowers there and stuff. And even in the woods where the uh, spider wart down here, are, I've seen smaller, uh, like the hover flies on them. And reptiles. Uh, sometimes when you're out in these forest preserves, you never know what you're going to see. And we were biking around Sand Pond and it had been wet uh, and rainy. And there were all these little bitty frogs uh, hopping all, all around. So I in digging a hole and laying its eggs. And I came back two days later and here some animal had raided um, the nest there and gotten at all the, all the eggs that the turtle had laid. And then, like I said, watch the weather. Um, there's dew and in like late August, September, uh, you can get the dewy webs. So you watch for your, um, calls for weather for the dew point in that so you know when to go out. And then wildlife. And here's one of the foxes by um, the marina. And because it's a diverse habitat with lake, the streams, the prairie, the woods, you do uh, get to see diverse species there. I've um, seen a, quite a few sandhill uh, sand cranes. <laughs> Um, and uh, ducks in, in the ponds or out on the lake um, and the great blue heron and stuff around. And you sometimes you go down there, you won't see anything. Sometimes you go down and you'll be surprised at what you see. And so I just say, be patient. 
be persistent, keep going back and just be prepared uh, that you could see anything. And I know geese aren't the most exciting, but it is fun to see the little goslings when they're real tiny in that. And the geese, since they're bigger, they're a little easier to practice um, with flight shots until you get to the smaller birds that you want to take uh, pictures of them flying. And here are um, some of the other birds. I, I must say Illinois Beach, I, I suppose because of the different habitat in that, it is a great uh, place for birding. Um, sometimes you don't always get to see them real close as you know, being photographers who want to photograph them, but the birders are there a lot. Um, it's uh, one of their primaries where they like to come to find uh, birds, especially during migration time, but they're, they're even um, migration time when we may think is for warblers in May or June, um, they're a lot there in, in early spring and later fall because all, all things are coming through, whether it's the ducks, um, they have the hawk watch um, there uh, near Sand Pond. And so they're watching the hawks migrate through. And then of course there's deer there. And sometimes I'm surprised at some of the things I see. The first time I saw this brown squirrel there, you know, you get kind of excited when you see something new that you haven't taken a picture of. And so take your first shot so you know you have got uh, a picture of it and then observe the animal and uh, look for behavior shots. And just by being calm and, and not moving and stuff, um, you can get get some nice shots. Just be observant. And talk to other people you see with big cameras and lenses or binoculars or spotting scopes. Um, and that's uh, from the birders. I always, if I see them out, I say, what are you seeing today? Um, I have a friend, uh, somebody who has become a friend um, that photographs there a lot. And I can always tell him when he's got his big lens out, I says, oh, there's Mark. And um, saw uh, these uh, beaver dams down there at Illinois Beach. And so he's, he told me they're there, but they usually don't come out till just before sunset. And so I have to make, I made sure several times I was there at that time and I was rewarded with seeing um, them out. and talk to fellow camera club members about uh, things they have seen. Follow tracks. And that's a good thing in winter time, um, you, if there's a fresh snow to follow tracks. And that's how we first saw the foxes down by the marina. Um, we actually, we saw them, they were robbing, trying to rob some fish from, from some, um, ice fishermen there, uh, the one fox, and then um, walked away and says, well, they must be around here somewhere. And sure enough, when we walked along, we, we saw tracks and followed the tracks. And so we got to see them several more times. And they had actually built a den right there in the rocks by the marina. So I was able to follow the kits that spring as they, um, right when they first emerged from the den, and then when they um, uh, moved around the marina and uh, grew up. And for wildlife uh, photo equipment, I use my 1-400 to image stabilizing lens, and I also have a 1.4 extender that I'll um, use for birds. I'm usually hand-holding, so I'm using a higher ISO, 400 to 800, so I can, uh, and so I can use a faster um, shutter speed one one four hundredth to one one thousandths for animal movement. Um, and I'm using shutter priority mode. And just be careful. Uh, take as much care as possible around uh, wildflowers. Respect the environment. 
um, somebody had um, made this path here to uh, get at the fringe gentians. And so I, I just stayed along that and not trampling down the other grasses around there and left my main bag out here. Um, so I went uh, crate uh, downtrodden area on my own. And then stay a safe distance away from wildlife. Uh, watch if they're, if you get a little closer, if they're getting a little nervous and start to move and then you know to stop. Uh, learn and watch out for hazardous substances and hazardous situations. This is like poison ivy, look out for that. Or if you decide to go out in winter, um, watch your step, um, be careful. Uh, don't go out on the lake, um, you know, be, be, very, be very careful where you're moving. And wear protective clothes and insect repellent in the uh, summertime. There are ticks out there and of course uh, mosquitoes and stuff and dress appropriately for the weather, um, whether it's rain or snow. You wanna stay warm and, and keep healthy. Uh, check for special events um, that may occur. Um, this was um, several years back when the uh, Audubon Society had a raptor shoot down at Illinois Beach at, by their hawk watch. Um, look, First, uh, we have fireworks, we have Venetian nights down uh, by the marina. And so it's sometimes fun to just go out and shoot off the fireworks. And you see my settings at the side that I um, use for that. Um, check eBird for bird hot spots and what people have reported seeing in the area. And that's uh, snowy owl. Um, this one is from a couple of years ago um, when we had one that was down by the marina uh, frequently, and I, I caught that uh, one there. And um, I, I missed the one. I didn't see the one there this year, but I was able to at Waukegan Beach. Um, they've had one that's come in and out a few times. So, so I've seen that one this year. Carrie, a question. Where, where do you find out about special events? like one of those, uh, like the Illinois um, camp, state campground websites, or um, how do you find out? Well, uh, like, you mean like for um, the raptor shoot? Yeah, or, or the- or, The raptor um, shoot is from the Audubon Society, the Lake County Audubon Society. And I've kind of, I've subscribed to, um, signed up for their thing. And so I find out when their meetings are, um, different things. And then um, eBird, I know some of the photographer, uh, not photographers, just the birders um, that um, have done, put pictures on eBird of different things they've seen and plus their birding list of things uh, they have seen. So that's um, how I found out about uh, that. Um, yeah, otherwise like, for um, fireworks displays and stuff like that. It's, it's mainly to the town. Um, uh, we have a Winthrop Harbor page and that's where our turkeys are on the Winthrop Harbor page. And I find out different events that are happening there. Um, I'm sure a lot of towns around will have um, just things about different events and then just sign up if there's certain types of things you're interested in, whether it's birds or that. Um, look for the, a group in your area, an Audubon group um, that meets in your area to find out um, what they are doing and what they have been seeing and, and that. And here's some of the, we had actually had a loons on our uh, little sand pond. Agreed. And then I've also just taken pictures of the with Harbor Marina. And just some final thoughts from this section. Observe life around you. People, animals, scenery. Um, look for light, lighting and where your good lighting is coming from. Anticipate action from animals. Always have a camera with you. Um, 
I know even when I take a, my dog for a walk in the neighborhood, I always have my iPhone with me in, in um, my pocket. So in case something comes out, I can take a picture of it. But mostly all, um, just have some fun. I don't know if anybody has questions. Uh, not a question, but I have a comment. Um, I actually did uh, camp at Illinois Beach State Park, and there's great camping there if you don't want to drive in and out. Um, it's a little different from some of the other state parks. You don't have to have a reservation. I think most of the year you can just go there, pick out a campsite, and then and then you know set up your your RV or your tents or whatever, and then you go to the to the office and you tell them, hey, I want to camp for three days, and they go, okay. And then you, you give them your 25 bucks a night and, and you can camp. So it's pretty, uh, it's pretty cool. And I find it's, you know, wherever you're at, it's always nice to camp in there. We have gone to different state. Uh, our vacations in the last two years have been to state parks, whether it's in Wisconsin or Illinois. And they, the places we've gone have been emptier <laughs> and, um, it's nice to stay in them because then you can be up early and see stuff that's around you and that, like the deer are out more, the animals are out more in the early morning or in the evening. And so you have better chances of seeing them. Yeah, getting up before dawn is easier if you're camping. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh... RD says, uh, how's the ice on the beach up there now? Um, oh, that's Ralph, Ralph Dunham, Durham. Okay. It, it wasn't that exciting. There was some like snow hills out there. And um, I know in the distance, we could see the waves underneath, just kind of slow waves out there, but nothing that exciting on the shoreline. Sarah, I noticed a couple of your pictures of the flowers. You had a low key and a high key picture. Are you using like a black and then a white background that you kind of, you know, clip up on something behind the flowers to get those particular images? Um, no, mostly my flower photography. Oh, well, there's one that it had a black background. Um, that was, I, I had used flash on that one. And it was getting, it was toward evening and I, I says, oh, I, I like that uh, so much. It's uh, real nice. So I, I used a uh, um, flash on it and it just kind of turned black because it was getting darker out, but it lit up the flower because it was closer to me. Um, and when I'm in the field, I haven't because I, I belong to a nature club <laughs> and there's a lot of things we can't do. Uh, although I have been experimenting like with the light box and that um, at home, just because I like to experiment around. But most of the time when I'm out in the field, I'm just doing it natural. Uh, Abbas asks about uh, light pollution and astrophotography. Did you try any of that? Uh, um, with the way shots? I think I did try something once when something was occurring. It didn't turn out the greatest. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of light pollution. There's a, the, yeah, if you look at the, uh, yeah. there's a, a, a website that you can get that tells you where, how much light pollution there is. And yeah. it's just too close to, well, to uh, metropolitan centers there. Yeah, it is. I mean, even when it doesn't seem close, you've got your Chicago on, on the south and Milwaukee on the north. And then you've got, all the towns in between there. So there, there is just too much light. I forget the uh, website, but if you Google light pollution map, I think you'll find it. And yeah, then, you can, then you can see places where it's really dark. You have to head out how farther west in the state. Uh, anyone else? Okay, if All right. I, I'll Next. move on, on to, let me, 
I think that website's called darksky.org. That's yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Or international dark areas. In between Chicago, Milwaukee, and Rockford, we don't get too many dark skies around here. Yeah. Yeah, I was camping at um, uh, close to Lake Koshkanong in Illinois, uh, in Milton, Illinois, and right by the lake is quite dark there. So that's that would be a good spot to uh, to focus on because it's a giant lake, and, but obviously there's there's no there's no people there in the middle of a giant lake. Okay, so then I'll move on. I don't know how to get rid of that share screen thing. Do you, are you seeing that at the top, the green sh sharing screen at the top, or is that just online? Uh, no, we can see it. I don't know. I, I don't remember having that problem with it being there before, even when I was seeing somebody else's presentation. Yeah, sometimes it's, it depends. Like if you have two screens, sometimes it's on the other screen, you know. Yeah. It's, it's not a problem. Okay. All right. So the red boxes of North Point Marina. Uh, one year, this is, um, we had some foxes. And um, this is just the idea, if you have an opportunity to see, see something for a short period of time, whether it's wild turkeys <laughs> or more interesting uh, red foxes, um, get in there and take, just seize the moment to just um, catch them as much as you can. Um, we had walked our dog down by the marina, and like I said, he was um, catching, trying to get some fish away from the ice fishermen, and walking down around near him, and we followed him, and then we saw tracks other times when we walked our dog, and so we were able to find out more about the foxes, and I was going down there every day in the morning. Uh, luckily, I found out um, the kits and that, they were not too active before nine in the morning. So I didn't have to get up super early and I'd stay there for a couple hours and then I'd come back in the uh, evening and watch them off also. So I worked part-time, so on my days off, I was there in the morning and on my uh, uh, days, yeah. And the days I worked, I was just there in the evening time. But here's a story. It's, I put together just a little story about the red foxes of North Point Marina. Well, maybe. It's January. It is cold. And it is snowy. Our winter walks by the lake are warmed at the sight of a beautiful red fox. We watch and follow him as he travels around the marina. With spring comes some little surprises, fox kits. It is one of their first times out of the den. Mom is standing cautiously nearby. The kits quickly retreat. At this age, they are very shy. They stick close to mom, but they are so curious. I go back day after day to try and catch a glimpse of these little creatures. I am rewarded with tender moments. They play around together or they just hang out. The ears have it. And here are a few cute poses. They are so little. But 
but they grow. Growing up, they learn to hunt. And they check out people. They go out exploring. Who is that? What are those? Can I eat that? This is more my size. I have a squirrel. Here's the many faces of the foxes. So how many little ones are there? One, two, three, Four, no, actually seven, six here and one behind me. They have fun with mom. Let's race. Surprise attack. Running up the road to get enough food to feed all those hungry mouths is a lot of work. And they do, they go all the way from the marina and they, they take a road off that goes to the marina all the way up despite construction trucks and stuff like, and they, they, wa they watched uh, and before they would cross the road. And here comes one with a uh, squirrel. So sometimes it just feels good to lie down and take a break. Finally, since the kids are growing up and getting a little more independent, the parents get a little time away to themselves. such memories from the first sight of a red fox in winter to seeing a young kit in spring then a whole family playing and having fun and learning about life as summer goes along they grow up and move away i miss you little foxes it was a great time All of that was at the North Marina. That was a, yes, that was a, a den of fox kits. And like I said, I was there every day. Um, if I was working, I was just there in the evenings. If I was um, not working, I'd go there in the morning for a couple hours and then go back in the um, evening again too. So it was just over season. Um, like in the winter time, we, we'd take our usual walks to get our walk in down down by there. And then um, it just, you know, the, we didn't see it for a long time. There was, you know, January we saw the fox, and but then in, in March we didn't see anything. The first kit came out in April. And um, 
then and and then we didn't see them that often, but then April, May, around May and June is when they were out almost every day, and then after that, then they they started leaving and you know there is less. So by the end of summer, they were gone. Edgar has a comment. He says, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, if you see something like that, I've had friends who have had um, foxes come through their neighborhood and stuff like that um, in their yard. And if you see them, take advantage of a, a situation like that and make sure you're out and checking it out. Any oh. other? Oh, sorry. Nope. Okay. Then the last thing is, as I just encourage you, if you have a certain interest in something, a certain subject, whether it's cars or I don't know, whatever it could be, flowers, study them in deep detail. Um, you can study uh, all kinds of cars and don't, um, besides just taking the whole picture of the car, Take pictures of the headlights, take pictures of the inside of the car, um, study it from all angles and that. Um, my thing has been trees. Um, when I first joined Riverwoods, I, be, I, um, I went to like Smoky Mountains in the fall and up north um, in the fall to the UP. And so I had a lot of fall color trees uh, that I entered. And I became known as a tree lady. And I just started, studied all about uh, trees, um, everything from um, when they first were getting started, um, different things that um, affected the trees. And this is the song of the trees, it just shows you the trees for the season and um, a study in the, in the trees. Oops, now I'm going to get back to show this. Okay, here we are.
Sorry, are these supposed to be different images, Sherry, or the same image? Is it, is it moving? No. Is it, is it moving for anybody? <laughs> Not for me. Not for me, it's just Vivaldi. It's just what? It's playing. just the music and one Vivaldi. shot. It's not, your slideshow is not slide showing. Okay. Oh, I'm to advance. One picture and great music. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I'm glad you told me now here. Uh, yeah. I'm not shy. Okay. <laughs> well, because it's not. Yeah, it was stuck on the title page. Okay. Okay. Um. <clears throat> Let's see. I'll try to do it from this angle here. Let's get application. See the pro show? No. Do you see the the, the tree the Song of the Trees entry thing there. We see the title, uh, uh, your .exe file. Okay. In your, uh, you in know, your quick it, access menu. Be a, a .exe file and those are often mistrusted by the uh, virus protection and that type of thing. Well, they're, they're, they're system files usually. So. And yeah, I know, I, but it should. Okay. .exe may be. It should be a movie file, right? Of some sort. Okay, well, you don't see anything now, right? You're not sharing your screen yet. Okay. Now you see the Song of the Trees thing? Yep, the first slide. Now can you see Botanic uh, Garden? Yeah, good. it moved. The moving now? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. Okay. So here we try again. Yeah, you got it now.
Okay. Very nice. Beautiful shots, Jerry. Very, very nice. Very inspirational. Good. So just, and that's just what I would just want people to do is just to go out or in your house and just uh, experiment and try stuff and um, photograph. Well, you've How given long us a lot of. How long did it take you to put that together, Jerry? How long? <laughs> a while. <laughs> you've given us a lot of ideas for shots. That's the. Uh... And and that's kind of what I wanted you to do is to show, you know, look at things that, in different ways. You know, I like the tree, and the more I started looking at, at like the trees, the more, like the fungus that grows on them. The big storm we had when we lost a thousand trees in Illinois Beach State Park, and I went out to photograph some of those, some of the trees that were toppled over, and um, the beavers that are down there. Uh, even though I got pictures of the beavers, I also saw the damage they do to some of the trees, how they gnaw at them, and then the tree would be over, and the um, just just the variety of things. Cool. Any any other questions for Sherry? We get a magnificent, excellent presentation and show. Beautiful program, Sherry. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. And that least that last comment was from Marie Rakosi. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing her last name correctly. Um, mm -hmm. Because uh, our next program in March is going to be from Joe and Marie Rakosi uh -huh. on in infrared photography. 
is our program in March. So, so far, we don't have one for February, but I'm still working on that. But definitely, Joe, come back uh, for Joe and Marie's program on infrared photography. Um, hopefully, uh, yeah, I've, I've been get, getting into infrared and it's a long learning curve. <laughs> I don't mind telling you. So um, hopefully if you're interested in that, uh, come back in March and, and you can uh, learn some more about that. And with that, Sherry, thank you so much. It was really, really enlightening and interesting. Um, great, great photographs. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm Carlos Cardona. This is the Garden Photographic Society. Like I said, uh, come back at, in March for Joe and Marie's Infrared Photography Show. And uh, check out our website at gardenphoto.org for all of our club information and, and program info. All right, everybody. Carlos, it's actually just Joe's program. Oh, it's just Joe's program. Joe's okay. doing the solo on the infrared, yes. <laughs> oh, okay. I had both of you on there. Got it. That's good to know. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks again, Sherry. Good night, Sherry.